Hey guys, thanks for joining us on this special episode, and don't forget to support our Patreon. Just a dollar or more will get you early access to all of our content as well as other special features. Enjoy the show! The following is a fan-based video review under fair use. Twister is owned by Warner Brothers Pictures, Universal Pictures, Emblem Entertainment, Steven Spielberg, Michael Crichton, and John DeBond. Please support the official release and streaming services. The Metro Toronto Convention Center has cancelled all events due to the pandemic. However, a top secret project is already underway. I am Dr. Lachin Helm Stone, assistant psychiatrist at the head of the Department of Meta-Human Control. You're the guys after Dr. Terawatt, aren't you? The department has authorized you to be placed under house arrest and on supervision for the time being. What? His former partner, a head psychiatrist at the local mental hospital, was rumored to be working on experiments with volunteer patients. The doctor has since been unknown to the public eye. Sorry, Doc, but I got other plans. I really hated that guy. The invasion can proceed faster. Getting to Unit 205 is our only hope. I got your message about the fuel supply you need. It will take time to replicate more now that we're on high alert here. Whoa! I got your message about this alliance. What's in it for me? Power Norman! I need your help, Peter. I found a miniature version of Thor's weapon. Maybe Thor got a message that you were in trouble. Send a message to S.H.I.E.L.D. Tell them we might need them. Who? The Avengers Initiative. search around for potential locations of Unit 205 today, but instead Mother Nature decided to be a bitch about it. I don't even know what I'm going to be doing for the next little bit. Especially with the disaster on our hands outside. Oh! Hey guys! What's up? It's Big Jack Films here, and... Come to think of it, I haven't talked much about disaster movies lately, have I? Yeah, what could be said about disaster movies? The short version is, they're pretty fucking awesome. They're always a joy to watch here and there, and depending on what type of wrath Mother Nature is having in her time of the month, they act as decent perils for a storyline for a set of human characters. But the main reason we like them is, for their special effects, whether it be models or CGI. Now, I have already covered a major disaster movie with the film Earthquake from 1974, starring Charlton Heston among many others, but I figured since I'm in a massive thunderstorm, I'd talk about a movie I've been kinda poking fun at since season one. 
Well, we might as well just ride the storm and take a look at one of my favorite films of the disaster movie genre. Let's take a look at 1996, Twister. Twister, the hot spot. Yeah, 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 Nostalgia Critic already made that joke. I'm talking about the goddamn movie. So this disaster movie takes place in the southern lands of Oklahoma, as we meet our hero of the film, played by Helen Hunt, for which she and her friends are a team of storm chasers, hunting down tornadoes to study their patterns of behavior. But of course, this is all complicated when her husband, played by Bill Paxton, shows up, and their bickering humor is a storm within itself. What? I'll say it. I said, weatherman, I think it's great. Oh, you had that tone. Christ. What? You couldn't resist, I'm could not you? saying you Come need on. therapy. Do you want to drive? I'm just saying. Would you like to drive? Yes, I'd love to. I didn't say that. I need a therapist. I what gee, I'm glad I paid twelve fifty in the movie theater to see two people in here. We got no This is not good. Get us out of here. Entertainment. But of course, as their bickering continues, storms are spotted throughout the state as our heroes chase after the massive tornadoes that plague the film. But it turns out they're in competition with their rival Jonas and his corporate sponsors, played by Wesley. He's in it for the money, not the science. I don't know, the last time Carrie always played a bad guy, it looked like this. Do you like bubbles? Oh, God! So with time of the essence and the storms brewing, our heroes must use their new device called Dorothy to inject into the storms because... Science, discovery, trying to see if tornadoes are predictable, I don't fucking know. The movie has a hard time explaining it itself, as our heroes dodge debris and flying cows to escape the incoming twisters and the biggest ones of all, which are labeled the Finger of God. So, what are my thoughts on the film Twister and its impact it's had in pop culture, movies, and disaster flicks? Well, quite frankly, as a kid, this movie traumatized me. Okay, to explain such terrifying moments of my childhood and seeing this film, I gotta go through a bit of back history of where I used to live. As a kid, my family and I used to travel and live in some areas of the United States, from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to areas of Orlando, Florida during vacation. And in my lifetime, I've experienced a few tornadoes in and of themselves. In Milwaukee, we had massive tornadoes and flash floods. I was totally oblivious to a tornado that hit Orlando, Florida back in 98. In fact, those storms in February 98 have some relevance to Twister, because while I did experience a preview showing of the attraction itself, the show was actually delayed due to those those specific storms that apparently killed over 40 people. Even Universal donated money to the victims who survived the storms. And the fact that I managed to actually be oblivious to those storms and being in the middle of it is quite a miracle. And in recent years, I actually experienced an F1 tornado hit my old house. Sure, the house survived, but the trees were fucked throughout the neighborhood. But during that time, I did see this movie countless times on VHS and... Yep, it, 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 it was terrifying, it, it scared the shit out of me, God help! And because of that, I hated storms, and I had such a phobia and fear of them. I guess you could say that phobia already began when I saw The Wizard of Oz as a kid, but... You know what's actually kind of funny about that? The effects in that movie honestly look a tad better than the effects in this movie. Kudos to them that even back in 1939, these effects are still pretty damn well received, and honestly, I still can't figure out how the hell they made that twister happen. It's a twister! It's a twister! But back to the movie Twister. Not only was this movie a scare fest for a young kid like myself, but I also got to experience the Twister Ride It Out attraction at Universal Studios Florida, which actually replaced the Ghostbuster Spooktacular. Then became Jimmy Fallon the Ride. I don't understand how this is supposed to work! At the time, the ride also contributed to my fear of tornadoes, and I was scared shitless going through that attraction. But to be fair, in recent years, I did get to experience it before it closed, and... Quite frankly, it lacked the wind. Crank the wind up, more wind, more wind. In fact, I think most Floridians would probably be like, oh yeah, I experience that every Tuesday. I don't need to go to the theme park for that. But much like my fear of sharks after seeing Jaws as a young kid, over time going back and watching the movie, I actually kind of enjoy watching Twister during a storm like this. And it kind of gets you in the mood for a thrilling, fun adventure, filled with outstanding special effects, a fun little story to go along with it with some jokeable dialogue, 
and some generic but decent human characters. Helen Hunt, being the hero of the piece, is probably the most in-depth in terms of character. It's mostly because we see her as a young girl in the beginning of the film, and she has sort of a personal vendetta with tornadoes, so it kind of explains why she becomes a storm chaser. Unfortunately, it is one of the major flaws in the film, but I'll get to that when I get about it. But here, she's actually a pretty decent character, and you can feel a lot of her pain and suffering in this film. But that, of course, doesn't beat the awesome charm of the one and only late Bill Paxton in this movie. And quite frankly, as much as Helen Hunt as the main hero, Bill Paxton is the star. This movie pretty much gave him much more leeway into being a leading man in Hollywood, and over time got to work on a ton of other films, from James Cameron's Titanic to Mighty Joe Young. And to be fair, he did have work prior in the industry, all the way back in the 80s, from of course The Terminator and Cameron's sequel, Aliens. Game over, man. Game over. But in this movie, he's actually a lot of fun to watch. He seems like such an expert in what he's talking about, and comes off as a charming leading man. His bickering with his ex-wife is kind of annoying at times, but over time, they rekindle their relationship, and by the end of it, they kind of end up back together, which is kind of sweet. They both share a great passion in chasing storms and studying what the hell makes them tick and it makes for some playful banter. The other characters in the movie are kind of generic stereotypes, but do have their moments. They're your typical band of heroes that all have their tricks and traits. While Bill Paxton's wife in the movie is okay at best, and kind of annoying at times, she does play her own in terms of her character, and does overall have an arc, especially when it appears she ends up with Dusty, played by the late Philip Seymour Hoffman. This was before he was a big star in Hollywood, and he plays probably the best comedic character of the film. In a way, he's kind of like Bill Paxton in Aliens. It's almost like he's looking at a sheer mirror of himself, but has some of the best jokes in the movie. <laughs> it's the wonder of nature, baby! But as much as this is a disaster movie, it's not complete without a human villain. And that, of course, goes to Jonas, played by Carrie Always, who is one of the sleaziest corporate asshole villains I have ever seen in a movie. And it's downright hilarious. It's our idea and you know it. Unrealized idea. Unrealized. That's probably due to the fact that Carrie Always is trying to do a Southern American accent, given the fact that he's British. Because... Unlike some other Robin Hoods, I can speak with an English accent. My boat. And to be fair, it's the better tornado movie with Robin Hood than the current tornado movie with Robin Hood. <laughs> and god damn it, he's trying so hard, but it's just so goddamn funny to watch. So stick around. Because the days of sniffing the dirt are over. He's on par with the likes of Cal or Biff Tannen. He's such a sleazeball in this movie. Wait, when I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. But with all the characters in place, what else does the movie have to offer? Well, quite frankly, the biggest highlight of the film is, of course, the amazing tornadoes and special effects. It's hard to tell if they ever used any real tornado footage, but for the majority of the film, they used digital effects. This was right after the groundbreaking effects of Jurassic Park, and definitely went to the filmmakers on that end to help out with the production, including Steven Spielberg himself and Amblem Entertainment, who were big producers on the film. Now, you might be thinking with Amblem and Steven's help, this might have been a Universal Studios movie given they had a ride at Universal Florida. But it turns out this movie was mostly made by Warner Brothers. Which, to be fair, Warner Brothers and Universal have always had a kindled relationship with one another. And some of the movie was actually recorded at the Universal sound stages, so in a way, it is sort of a collaboration between the two studios. And with Emblem and Steven at the helm after Jurassic Park, they of course went to the groundbreaking effects masters of Industrial Light and Magic. And to their credit, it looked like the tornado effects were a lot easier to do than rendering dinosaurs. Because quite frankly, you're just dealing with CG particles that can easily be manipulative. Anybody can kind of do this nowadays, but back then, this was a groundbreaking achievement for digital special effects. And they went above that, too. They also managed to make some CG cows in the background, and quite frankly, they're probably the weakest element of the movie in terms of the digital effects. I gotta go, Julia, we got cows! <laughs> But outside of that, the majority of the production design of this movie is actually all for real. 
They shot this movie literally in Oklahoma during massive twister and weather conditions. Not to mention, the production design and the disaster elements of all the rubble and debris and destroyed buildings are honestly spectacular. The movie does have a fair share of awesome tornado highlights. From the chase scene with the Jeep, the attempts to try to get Dorothy off the ground, even trying to save the old lady in the house after a massive tornado hit the neighborhood. There's a lot of thrilling moments in this movie. And outside of the special effects, Kudos also has to go to the amazing sound design which for any disaster movie is key in creating the impact and force of nature. Plus, the movie is kind of an inspirational one. Much like Jaws bringing about more marine biologists and studying sharks, and Jurassic Park bringing about more attention to paleontology, Twister brought in a lot more of the attention regarding storm chasing and geologists. And to this day, many storm chasers have said they were inspired by the movie Twister. In fact, when Bill Paxton died, a lot of storm chasers made a big sign that could be seen through satellites in space in honor of the actor. So the movie does have its impact in film history, and quite frankly, I still think it's one of the better disaster films. Hell, the movie was such a huge hit at the box office that every piece of media poured the shit out of themselves in promoting tornadoes and the subject itself. Even a VHS company confusing the shit out of people with a direct-to-video title called Twister 2. I'm not kidding, as a kid, this actually confused me that this was a legitimate sequel to the movie. All it is is just stock footage and b-roll from storm chasers on real tornadoes. Nothing really else, honestly. But to be fair, some people have actually said a sequel would be nice to see. Now can we validate, is there any sort of movement on a Twister 2? Is there any real traction, is yeah. what you're asking me? I'd have to say right now that the freight train is sitting on the track, but... <sighs> It ain't moving. You need to do a sequel where Helen and I are passing the torch to a daughter, and uh, I have talked to a few people who were involved with the original film. I would love to see Steven Spielberg direct the sequel. <laughs> Hell, there was even a ripoff starring Bruce Campbell simply called Tornado that came out the exact same year. Seriously, look it up. I just discovered this looking through YouTube. was provided by Mark Mancina, who I don't know if I've ever discussed fully, but he's had his fair share of great soundtracks from Tarzan, Speed, Training Day, and even Terminator 3. But Twister is probably one of his best pieces of work. The soundtrack is honestly really blood pumping and really gets you in the heart of the action, acting as sort of an external soundtrack to the sound effects and visuals of the Twisters. While I don't have much to say in terms of the entirety of the score, there's one track that I really like, and that's when we see our first major set of tornadoes, with the choir acting as the awe for the audience. The reason I like this track so much is that it kind of reminds me of the Halo theme. Seriously, listen to them back to back. I don't know why, but maybe if they make a Halo movie, no emblem, that doesn't count. A lot of people said that was bad. I would like to see Mark Mancina actually do the score to a Halo movie. It would be kind of cool. The soundtrack was slightly released during the time of the movie's release and got an expanded soundtrack later on, but for the majority of merchandise buyers of the film, there was a companion album with, of course, a ton of artists lending their songs for the film. From the Goo Goo Dolls, Stevie Nicks, Shiana Twain, and of course the biggest artist on the soundtrack, Van Helen, with two songs in the film, Human Beings and Respect the Wind. The soundtrack overall is okay at best, but it's not one of Warner Brothers' best soundtracks of the 90s. That of course goes to Space Jam and Batman Forever, quite honestly. And much like most action 90s movies, it's not perfect. Now, with the movie being a decent disaster film, there of course are a few problems I have with it. And they're not too big, but they do take away from the realism of the film. The first one being, of course, some of the banter and explanation of how the storms work, which, quite frankly, half of it is kind of bullshit. Though there are some actual scientific facts 
facts about geology and the storms themselves, including the categories of the storms. Unlike a hurricane, which normally labels the storms as categories in terms of size and scale, Twister brings up the fact that tornadoes are named after Fs, but they only have a limited amount of numbers, and the film does explain it in a way the audience can easily understand. No, that, that was a good size Twister. What was that, an F3? Solid F2. Counter me had back there is a strong F2, F3 maybe. Bet we see some F4s today. Wait. Yeah, that's some pretty good facts, all things considered. Is there an F5? Okay, I don't know why, but this scene has stuck with so many people who have watched this movie. An F5 makes everyone drop their utensils. It's the equivalent of saying something and somebody drops a glass of water in shock. It's so cliche, yet I kind of love it. What would that be like? The finger of God. And yeah, there are a ton of cliches in this movie. There's no moon! It's a space station! Ah! And one of the biggest is probably one of the most offensive in the film regarding its realism. That, of course, being the character of Helen Hunt and her reason for hunting down the Twisters. The main reason being... The tornado killed her father, and she wants to chase them and put Dorothy in them to avenge her father's death. I'm not kidding. You've never seen him miss this house and miss that house and come after you. You can't explain it. You can't predict it. Killing yourself won't bring your dad back. Oh my god. You're Princess Briding me right now. Okay, movie, you were kind of the equivalent of Jaws in terms of disaster movies, but you've gone the boundaries of Jaws the Revenge in terms of stupid. This is so laughably dumb of a plotline for this movie. Helen Hunt is literally chasing down tornadoes to get revenge for her father. NSSL predicting an F5. Gonna happen to somebody else. You, you go stop it. What, is the tornado an actual living being? Does it have a conscience? Is it able to think and try to hunt down our heroes? Oh, holy shit, it actually does. God, this movie in some areas is like a big cartoon. I can't take it seriously. That's like if I went out in the middle of this goddamn forsaken storm we're in right now and was like... Morla, my name is Helen You killed my father. Prepare to die. Oh, uh, how were you expecting to fight me, dude? I'm freaking God! By the way, I do not meet the price in your tunnel, though, but you would not happen to have six feet in the Why do I always show up in this guy's show every time it's a Bill Paxton movie? You mock my pain! Life is pain, Highness. This is the part of the movie that hasn't really aged that well, folks. And quite frankly, despite the dumb dialogue and the bickering between the characters, this is the part I can just enjoy and laugh at for how utterly idiotic it is. I mean, who the fuck wrote this part of the movie? It's not like they got somebody like Michael Crichton to write- Oh my god, they actually did. Holy shit, Michael Crichton wrote this script? No wonder they advertised it crazy like they did with Jurassic Park. Which is probably why the movie did so damn well. The producers of Jurassic Park. Michael Crichton and Steven Spielberg are at it again. Last time around it was the mega hit Jurassic Park. The producers of Jurassic Park. Twister comes from producer Steven Spielberg and Jurassic Park's Michael Crichton. Like Jaws and Jurassic Park. From the producers of Jurassic Park. 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 Welcome. To Jurassic Park. It's coming! It's headed right for us! It's already here! Seriously, this movie was hyped as hell! Like I said, so many media outlets promoted the shit out of this movie, including Oprah Winfrey doing a goddamn episode of her show dedicated to this movie! There are some people who literally got swept away by tornadoes. Literally, they weren't acting. You get a tornado! You get a tornado! You get a tornado! You get a tornado! You get a tornado. Everybody gets a tornado! Oh, come on, I've always wanted to make an Oprah Winfrey joke. Man, this really was one of the most hyped films of the 90s, and quite frankly, despite its flaws, I still love it and think, yeah, it was worth the hype and praise. Sort of a short little review on this one, but honestly, this movie still holds up. 
Overall, Twister is one of the best disaster movies out there. Sure, it's no masterpiece and is kind of on par with Earthquake in terms of ridiculousness, among other disaster movies out there, but it's nowhere near as batshit insane as, say, a Roland Emmerich disaster movie. Actually, despite Independence Day being the highest grossing film of 1996, Twister managed to make it into second place. And because of that, it's one of the best. It's got great special effects, some decent sound design, a haunting score, and some decent characters with some witty, jokey dialogue. And because of its popularity, even to this day, an inspiration for Storm Chasers over 25 years since it came out, it does deserve the title as one of the best in the genre. And I would say it comes in at a decent 7.5 out of 10. Nothing too spectacular, quite frankly, but it's one of the best movies in the 90s and one of the better disaster movies. So check it out, buy it on Blu-ray, and honestly, the best time to watch it is during a good storm. It's definitely a film that, despite later disaster movies, is a lightning bolt that would never strike twice. Despite what you would say about that direct-to-video VHS cash-in. Seriously, what the hell, media? And that's my overall thoughts on the film Twister, and to this day, it's still pretty good, and one of the best disaster movies of all time. But of course I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on the film? Do you think it's still a decent movie, or do you think it has some problems like the ones I picked out? Let me know in the comment section below. And trust me, with the amount of storms and other disasters out in the world, it's not like other people I know have caused disasters in, say, San Francisco. It Sir, this is your computer AI voice. What? It turns out an incident actually occurred in San Diego. What? Fictional energy was detected in an attack on the city. One of your fellow critics thwarted the attack with countermeasures. And a Good evening, and welcome back to another edition of Channel 9 Action News. We begin tonight's stories with an update on the closed Metro Toronto Convention Center that has been off limits since the start of the pandemic. Recent reports on the top secret operation has been rumored of leaked information of it being used to house a new missile defense network in a launching bay for a high class weapon. This coming from rumors that tensions are growing in Europe as the pandemic has caused unrest and mistrust within governments. The press was invited to a hearing from the head of security at the center, Dr. Ratchet Von Stone, who had this to say about the potential leaked information. The rumors of this technology being considered a weapon is completely false, I can assure you all, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Stone, there have been rumors of Doug Ford has been using taxpayer funds to finance this project. Can you confirm or deny those assumptions? I can assure you that the fat man is even too incompetent to finance our projects. Mr. Stone, is this a project being weaponized as a precaution with tensions between China and the United States? This technology is not being used as a weapon, I can assure you. It is being used to advance the processes of human evolution and technology. Mr. Stone, your reputation has been widely rumored that you're in contact with one Dr. Nigel Gabal, who was stripped of his titles in 2004. Is he still practicing his profession, or do you have any contact with him given his allegations of inhumane experimentation? Those reports were printed false about 20 years ago. You should know that. If you excuse me, everyone, we must get back to work. Watch it. 
Von Stone. Ah, Cobra Commander. A pleasant of you to join us with the process. Congratulations on the capture of Patient 92. <laughs> Why did what you could not back in 2017, Commander? What is the latest of Project 7421? Process goes well. The new technology acquired after the invasion of the Empire back in 2018 has been a major progress for us. Soon, very soon, the new weapon will be fully operational. The press have been on our asses since the leaks came out. We've had to cover our tracks very carefully. Don't get cocky, Dr. Von Stone. The Master wants the weapon up and running as soon as possible. And with patient 92 out of the way, production will proceed faster. Trevor, don't worry about that. What? Patient 92 is ordered to be incarceration by the boss's commands. He will do what he sees fit with him. That was not part of the deal! Paycheck Films was to be under my jurisdiction! The boss will do what he wishes with patient 92. I suggest you watch your mouth, Copa Commander. Whatever would your master say? I could execute you when you stand. You're lucky they're letting me keep you alive. <laughs> you best watch yourself, Commander. Proceed, Doctor. Just say, come on. Fish. <laughs>